Hello again, I'm Ari Altman from the Tech Buyers Guru and I'm here to show you how we're going to install the EVGA Hybrid Liquid Cooler for the GTX 1080 Ti. In uh, two previously released videos I've showed you an unboxing of this product. I've also showed you how to disassemble the GTX 1080 Ti Founders Edition, which is what this card is designed for. This uh, cooler is designed for. It's also designed for the Titan X Pascal card. It is not designed, by the way, for any a custom edition version of the GTX 1080 Ti that includes EVGA's own custom versions of the GTX 1080 Ti. This cooler will not fit on those PCBs. Uh, it will fit on any Founders Edition card, so it's not exclusive to EVGA products. Uh, and uh, a couple other things I want to mention before we shift over to the assembly is that, like I mentioned in previous videos, the Manual is not specific to this model number, part number 5388-B1. It is a cooler designed for this card, but the, the manual references only the Titan X 1080 and 1070. So it's really for a different cooler. I think we're going to be okay having looked at this uh, very carefully and looked at the product. I think basically this manual is so general that EVDA just decided, well, it, it's close enough. Um, I will tell you the truth. I'm not super enthusiastic about the way EVJ has gone about writing this manual. Uh, they aren't specific about the parts, the steps. There is no inventory of the screws you, included in the package, despite the fact that there are about, I'd say, 50 screws included in little parts bags like this. Uh, uh, there are a few screws and other accessories that I don't actually know uh, the purpose for. So I'll set these aside if I figure out along the way, that's great. Uh, there is no reference to them in the manual. For the most part, these screws are replacements for what comes on the Founders Edition card, which is good because some of those actually can be stripped when you're removing them from your card. Uh, and I'll be highlighting as we go through the screws that I'm using and the parts value it comes in. They are, they're not labeled, but at least uh, I'll try to identify what the screws look like. There's a, a number of different uh, bags. There are two screws that EVGA does not provide replacements for, which I think is an oversight. And uh, that oversight was also included in the disassembly process where they don't mention you have to unscrew the original shroud from the I.O. panel. There are two screws that go in here that connect to the uh, shroud. EVJ didn't mention those and didn't replace the screws. So when you're disassembling your Founders Edition card, you got to remove those two screws and you got to keep them. Um, otherwise, you won't be able to uh, properly reattach the I.O. panel to the new shroud. The shroud does indeed have two two screw holes. Uh, oh, sorry, the screw holes are actually in the back plate, uh, the base plate here. Uh, these screws will hopefully fit right in here uh, through the I/O panel, but EVJ doesn't include them, so don't throw them out when you're disassembling your 1080 tie. Uh, so that's it. I'm going to be uh, moving the camera over right on top of the workbench so you can see what happens. Uh, we're going to go through this step by step. Uh, the steps that you'll be seeing are first the installation of the base plate onto the PCB. Then you're going to be seeing the installation of the cooling block on top through the base plate. Uh, then you're going to be seeing the installation of the shroud on top of the cooling block, block and base plate. And finally, I will attach the original Founders Edition back plate. EVJ does not include a new back plate. I'm hoping that this one will fit on. I don't foresee any problems, but again, you don't want to throw that out when you're disassembling your card or damage it, ideally, because it's going to go back on your card when you're done. All right, so I'm going to cut out for a second here, reposition the camera, so you can get a really good view of what's happening right on the workbench as we install this hybrid cooler for the GTX 1080 Ti. All right, we're back. You're not going to see me, but you'll see my hands working on this card and this cooler. Uh, I've looked through the manual uh, pretty extensively. I'm hopefully not going to have to refer to it at this point. And there's some guesswork that uh, we're going to need to uh, use because the manual isn't that specific. So the first step on, uh, on assembling the hybrid cooler is to attach the base plate. I've already removed the tape uh, uh, from the, the thermal pads here. So you remember to do that. And you know you want to kind of take a look, uh, make sure that when you drop this down onto your PCB, you do it relatively straight so you don't tear any of this thermal, uh, the thermal pads here as you go down on that PCB. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to try to get that as straight as possible. Okay. All right. Now, there it fell and slipped into place. That's good. Now, to actually attach it to the uh, PCB, I have to flip this over. I'm going to hold it 
and I'm going to start using these uh, very small bolts. Now, these are identical to the bolts that were included with the Founders Edition, and unfortunately, they are not uh, Phillips head or even Allen head. They are they are hex head and uh, very very difficult to install. Uh, okay, now I have attached the uh, base plate to the PCB, and in the process of doing this, I determined that really it made the most sense to find a tool that would would work adequately for this. I happen to have this tiny little box wrench that is uh, for actually a remote control car, radio control car. I really wish that EVGA had included something like this. This is an inexpensive tool, uh, but it's practically a necessity for getting these uh, hex head screws uh, through uh, the ba uh, base plate, particularly because they have thread lock on them. So it, it uh, actually requires a little bit of force. I, I've attached most of these, but I'll just show you what this looks like. So I'm just screwing these in right here, just going through the back of the PCB and into the base plate. Got a few left here. I think there are 14 of these tiny hex head screws that EVGA includes as replacements for the Founders Edition ones. Uh, those are uh, identical, but you know, once they're unscrewed, the thread lock is uh, not really uh, capable of ho holding it under vibration anymore. So I'm just going to tighten all these, and I actually have one more that's sitting right on the uh, workbench here that I'm going to tight uh, install. So these are uh, these are these are all pretty much tight. Um, and then we're, what we're going to be doing is attaching the heating block. So again, I really wish that EVJ had included a tool like this. Here's the last one I got to put in here um, because this is not something that the average PC builder has in their toolbox. Uh, we don't really use these kind of screws, and when we're building PCs, we use really Phillips head screws most of the time, uh, different sizes, but. Uh, or perhaps some hex head screws, but or Allen Allen head screws, but not these hex head screws. These are very unusual in the PC world. So if you don't have something like this that looks a little like that, a hex wrench, uh, you might want to buy one uh, before you go about trying to install this. So now we've got all 14: 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 hex head screws affixed through the PCB and into this uh, base plate. I'm going to put that down. The next step is to attach the cooling block. I think from now on I'm going to be able to use my screwdriver set. Uh, everything else is a standard screwdriver. So this heating block, uh, the cooling block I should say, has a plastic cover on it. We're going to take that off. There's pre-applied thermal paste and while um, in general I, I, I recommend using a a, a third-party paste. We're just going to go ahead and use EVJ's paste here. I assume it was designed properly for this cooler. Uh, some enthusiasts may want to use another uh, product. I like Noctua NTH1 for my CPU coolers. But here we're just going to go ahead and use this uh, right, right, uh, right here. Uh, by the way, there's a little rubber uh, piece here that in, that slips over a uh, metal uh, leg here. This is where your tubes will be uh, held. So we're going to go like this, drop it down. Okay, so it fits into place. I got to flip it over to fix four screws. Now, of course, now we have this radiator attached, so it's a little bit clumsy, um, which is just something you got to deal with. You know, whenever you're dealing with liquid cooling, it's going to be a lot clumsier than air cooling. So, you know, this is now going to be permanently affixed, and it's going to be kind of a, a hanger on whenever we're moving this video card around. So I'm going to take my number one Phillips screwdriver and affix this through and hopefully get some bite there. Uh, I'm going to go around and try to affix a couple so we can equalize the pressure. Uh, let's see if we can get this in here. This is this takes a little dexterity because I'm, I'm having to push that cooling block onto the GPU while holding the PCB. You know, this is one of those many situations in PC work where you wish you had three hands. Okay. I do think that this cooling block is is attached though. That's good. So in other words, my screws are getting a little bit of purchase here and getting into that uh, cooling block. Let's see if that one... Do we have that one in? Okay. I'm going to tighten those in a second. I just want to show you what I've done here. That cooling block is, is now on there. I've got to tighten it up with my number one 
Phillips screwdriver. Um, and then we will uh, we'll move on to the next step. This is a lot easier than doing those hex head screws I was just telling you about. Because as a PC builder, most people are familiar with a, number, uh, with a Phillips head screwdriver. This is a number one. Number two is going to be too big. Let's flip that back over. All right, we've got a cooling block. It's starting to look more like the, the finished product here. Now we've got a couple cables that we have to deal with. Again, none of this is documented in the EVJ manual, so I am uh, kind of doing this a little bit blind, and you'll want to follow along with me because uh, it's not really clear how you're supposed to do it from the manual. So let's do that again. We're going to attach uh, the radio fan to the jumper here. We're going to attach this to the PCB. I almost called it a motherboard. It basically is the motherboard for the video card. Uh -huh. All right. Now, so this stuff has to get out of the way, doesn't it? Yes, it does. So um, I'm going to try to figure out where we can put this stuff. It's not exactly compact. There we go. I'm going to tuck that in there. And this fan lead, there is a little bit of extra space here. Not a ton. Um, UVJ actually provides a little bit of tape that it suggests, I think, that you can use uh, to just, uh, practically, it's like a, a little sticker. I think that's what this is. We're going to try to just uh, tape down this little guy here. All right. So now the only issue with this is that there's actually another header here for the LED. Okay, the shrouds light. So this I'm going to tip tip this up. This cable is for the fan, but I'm about to attach another cable uh, right into this header here. It's going to be a tight fit around that cable. All right, so let's take, uh, let's see if I can get that positioned a bit better here. Pull that taut. We'll see in a second if this works out. I hope this tape is getting a little stuck on itself. So as you can tell, this is, uh, this is a little bit like surgery. <laughs> um, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. Okay, so I think we got that pretty good now. The next step is to actually attach the shroud. Now, the interesting thing about this shroud versus the Founders Edition shroud is it, is it, it really encloses the radial fan. All right, And this, what you see here, sounds like metal. It is metal. You think it would be a heat sink? It actually is a non-functional heat sink. I took a look at it before I assembled this. And this does actually does not have any thermal tape on the back. It does not make contact with any components on the PCB. And in fact, it's not even get any airflow through it because due to the uh, enclosed housing here for this fan, all the air is blown this direction and not out the front of the car. So this is completely aesthetic. And uh, you'll see once we put this down, it, it looks pretty good, but it, uh, it's completely aesthetic and not functional. So I got a tiny lead here. This is for the LED controller. I'm going to slip this in. Like I said, it's kind of getting a little crowded here. Uh, all right, that's in. So we've got a couple of wires here that we got to keep out of the way of the fan, and we'll see if we can do that. I'm going to drop this down, see if I can get these cables in there behind the... Yeah, I think it's going to work. We're going to get those... All right. Okay, I'm dropping this down. All right, I'm back with the card. You can see that the shroud is on. I have not yet affixed it, but because I wanted to tell you a few things. Uh, first of all, let's flip this around. The uh, wire lead for the fan connector uh, goes through the middle here. There actually is a passage there uh, between the two coolant hoses. And the biggest challenge actually was getting this shroud to fit over the internal cables, uh, wire leads that fit right around this radial fan. Okay, there's a couple of wire leads, one for the LED, one for this fan power lead. The, the, it's, it's really tight in there, so um, the, the shroud didn't want to sit back down on, on, on the uh, base plate here, but I got it down. Um, okay, next thing we're going to do here is we're going to affix the screws. Now, EVGA included, I don't know, 20 screws. You actually only need eight <coughs> to attach this shroud. I'll show you where these screws go. So we've got two in front of the card. 
Remember I mentioned that the uh, this heatsink is totally uh, aesthetic. I don't think it plays any role in cooling this card. It does not have any thermal tape on it. It does not touch any components. And no air will blow through it because the fan is completely enclosed. Uh, okay, we've got two of our eight in here. Interestingly, EVJ did choose to use uh, Phillips head screws here. The Founders Edition uses uh, Allen head screws to attach its shroud. Uh, and luckily, you don't actually have to remove the shroud from the base plate on the Founders Edition. It all, it all comes apart in one. This is where I kind of wish I had a magnetic number one screwdriver. It'd be a lot easier to fix these tiny little screws. This one is a little, needs to be reset here. There we go. All right, got a few more. Oh, kind of hard to do. Again, wish I had three hands. As long as we're around here, I'm going to show you the back. There is the two screws that EVJ did not include. I've already fixed one. And here's another one. This is from the Founders Edition. It goes through the I.O. plate. All right. So you've got to remember to keep that from your disassembly process. That is screwing into the back of the uh, base plate. It does fit, so that worked. So now my base plate is attached to that I.O. panel. I've got these two little screws left. And then we're gonna, we're basically finished. Um, we gotta put that back plate on, which is, um, which uses some really tiny screws. I'm not exactly looking forward to that. Although I think it'll be easier to screw them in than it was to remove them. All right, come on, we're almost done here. Much easier when I'm looking at the screws and looking away from them. All right, so the shroud's on. Almost done, guys. Um, there's your EVJ hybrid uh, cooler installed on a 1080 tie. I'm going to flip it over and, and install these, uh, these screws through the back plate. And then uh, we, we will be done. So remember, this is the original Founders Edition back plate. Interestingly, there is some thermal tape that uh, was on the original Founders Edition that touches that component right there on the PCB. So, you know, if when you're disassembling it, if that tape rips off, uh, I really don't know what to tell you. You, you may you want to try to kind of get it back on there. Um, so here are those tiny screws I told you about. They're so small, I can barely even hold them. I got to go to my tiny screwdriver here. My number one Phillips is too big. Imagine that. Okay, I got all these screws in except one. And in this process, I realized what this lonely little nut is for. Okay, you see this? This came in the package with the cooler. No explanation whatsoever from EVGA as to what this thing is. Okay, well, as it turns out, the way that EVGA built its, its base plate, uh, when you go to insert the screw through the back of the back plate, there's nothing for it to, to fix to. You actually have to put this little nut in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, this is another time when I wish I had three hands because really what I need is a pliers to hold that in place, another hand to hold the screw, and a, a third hand to fix the screw. I don't have three hands though, so we're going to go and give this a try. So if you can see what I'm doing, I've got this tiny little nut here. It's supposed to go in here. Yep. I'm going to drop the screw in through it and hopefully get, get it to a fix here. We got it? Yes. Folks, the cooler's installed. There you have your EVJ hybrid liquid cooler for the GTX 1080 tie, uh, part number 5388-B1. The installation's complete, but of course, uh, we're gonna have to see whether or not it works, right? Hey everybody, it's Ari Altman one more time for the Tech Buyers Guru finishing off the installation of the GTX 1080 Ti upgraded with EVGA Hybrid Liquid Cooler. What you see here is the system fully running. Uh, I in fact am running uh, two cards in SLI. It, it, I tested one card out, worked perfectly on the first touch of the power button, first boot. 
So I thought, well, I'll do some benching and then I threw in my second card. Uh, I'm going to walk you through the last steps that I took to uh, uh, upgrade my GTX 1080 Ti and tell you about a few things you should be aware of if you're going to make this uh, upgrade yourself. So I'm going to walk around to the front of the system. Uh, just as a reminder, I upgraded a GTX 1080 Ti Founders Edition. I upgraded it with the GeForce Hybrid Cooler from EVGA, part number 5388-B1. As of my most recent check, it still isn't available anywhere. I got this at B&H uh, Photo Video in mid-May. It sold out instantly, and you still can't get it. And it's about three weeks later. EVGA doesn't even have it. I hope they're going to bring it back because honestly, from what I've seen, although I didn't love the installation process, the perform performance is excellent. Um, and I'm going to be publishing some benchmarks of it on the website. But in the meantime, I wanted to tell you a little bit more about the installation process. There were a couple things that uh, became clear to me when I went to finalize it that I had, haven't mentioned yet. So the first thing is there were uh, a few extra screws and some washers and I wasn't sure what they were for. They were actually to install the radiator at the, in, in your case. And a uh, reason I hadn't thought about it, uh, what those were for, was that of course there was already a fan there. I had fan screws for that radiator, for that fan. But the radiator requires a different kind of screw. It needs a, a metal screw rather than a plastic screw. So through the back of the case went those four screws and washers, uh, replacing the rear fan. So what you have now is your radiator installed, your EVGA fan, uh, the coolant hoses, which I've used the EVGA uh, hook and loop ties to connect to my Corsair uh, liquid coolant tubes just to keep things a little neat in here because if I didn't have these strapped down they'd kind of hit the side of the case. Last thing I, I didn't realize until I went to hook it up was that the fan cable, there's a, a three pin connector here, I'm going to disconnect it uh, just so you see what I'm talking about. Uh, just dis disconnected that rear fan. I thought that the fan might plug into the motherboard but in fact it doesn't. This is just, this just plugs right into the fan, plugs right into the video card. I don't know why EVGA doesn't just connect this from the factory uh, because it, it runs right along the hose line so it's not like you couldn't have it installed out of the box or connected out of the box but one thing I'll mention about this fan it has a very short power lead and um, my preference would actually be to hook this up into my motherboard and give it a little bit more control because as it is it's really quite loud and idle I don't know if you can hear it but I'll stop talking for a second as I plug this in You probably can't hear it on camera, but this is a fairly loud fan. It starts at about 1150 RPM as controlled by the video card. That's pretty loud. That's pretty high uh, RPM for idle. And uh, my preference would be to get a, a different fan on here and with a, a longer power lead so that I could hook it up into one of my motherboards of fan headers. Uh, the only other thing that I'll mention is that, uh, of course, there is a lighting on this card. It's white only as far as I can tell. Uh, my other GeForce GTX 1080 Ti card has an NVIDIA green. I think it would be great if EVGA added maybe some uh, RGB effects to this so at least you can match it up with other cards. But as it is, white is actually fairly universal and I'm also running white on my EVGA uh, high bandwidth SLI bridge. So that's pretty much it. Um, I'm really pleased with the performance. It is, it is a little loud, but that's what you get with liquid cooling. You know, it's kind of something that people don't necessarily realize before they try it, but liquid cooling is pretty loud because the pump is always running. And so even at idle, particularly at idle, it's quite loud. At, at, at load, what I've seen, I, I, I uh, booted this up into a game of uh, Witcher 3, 4K. It was running at about 80, uh, 88, 89, uh, uh, frames per second, which is really fast for 4K. This was an SLI. And that top card hit a maximum of 54 degrees Celsius. That is unbelievable because uh, I had to max out my fan on that card to keep it at 80 degrees Celsius previously when running an SLI in Witcher 3. So that's just kind of an example of what you get with liquid cooling. The thing doesn't even have to work. The fan stays at the same level it is at right now, 23% translates to about 1150 RPM no matter what the load okay so no matter what I was doing this fan is always spinning at the same uh, rate which is why I really think it would be great to uh, have it go lower at idle uh, 
So that's about it. You know, when you're in the gaming, when you're in a gaming session, the system's actually a lot quieter than running two air-cooled cards, particularly Founders Edition cards. Uh, but at idle, like I said, it's pretty loud, and even that pump, if I even when I take uh, unplug that fan, the pump is still pretty loud. So that's that's pretty much it. Um, I'm I'm actually quite pleased with it overall. Uh, my only feeling is that EVGA really needs to step up its game in terms of its manuals. Uh, I felt that the manual was really not directed at the end user or a retail customer. It felt like a manual that was intended for an OEM. And um, I think EVGA has to step up its game. It's charging quite a lot for this product. Uh, the quality is there. And actually, obviously the functionality is there. But that manual, you know, I don't think EVD is really that familiar with how to run, write a really good manual, a detailed manual, because most of its products simply don't require one. But this, where you're doing a lot of disassembly and reassembly of an expensive, delicate a product, I think the manual has to improve. So, hey, EVGA, if you're listening, you can come to me. I can help you out. And for all of you out there who are looking to make this upgrade, first of all, I hope that these uh, coolers come back in stock someday, that EVGA hasn't pulled a plug on this entire product uh, day after launch. Uh, but second of all, hopefully these, uh, the series of videos has helped you uh, gain confidence that this is a product you could install for yourself. And uh, hopefully you'll subscribe to this channel, you'll like this video, and I'll be bringing you more how-to videos from the Tech Buyers Guru. Till then, take care.